can certainly leave time for that uh, at the end. So, uh, uh, as Don mentioned, I, I flew in from Canada today, and um, uh, I'm part of the diaphragmatic hernia team. Actually, I'm the surgeon that actually follows all of our diaphragmatic hernia kids in our CDH clinic. And uh, I think there are many centers now that have a CDH clinic to follow their, their kids because they have ongoing issues. And so I, uh, I'm the surgical uh, person on the team, but we have uh, respirologists, we have a cardiologist, we have nurse specialists. And in fact, during lunch, I was answering some of the emails from some of our nurse specialists that keep getting calls mm -hmm. from families about their, their kids. And it really requires a multidisciplinary team to follow them because there are so many aspects of diaphragmatic hernia kids that we need to follow. So I, I owe a special thanks to uh, my colleague and mentor, Dr. Langer, who actually has been on the Cherub's board for the past 10 years and has a very keen interest in Cherub's and all, all of our diaphragmatic hernia patients. So just as an overview, I just, as I said, uh, covered the diaphragmatic hernia surgery, the repair part, uh, for, for today's uh, presentation. I'll talk a little bit about diaphragmatic hernia history because uh, the history of medicine is an interest of mine, but um, certainly even the last 30 years of how we fix diaphragmatic hernias has changed. Uh, the timing of our surgeries, the types of patches, we give them other patches, uh, the approaches to our repairs, and some of the cautionary tales uh, that uh, I've come across. And also, you know, just so that I can, you know, be, uh, you know, if I could wish the world, you know, dream big, what I see the future of CDH repair would be. So uh, please feel free to stop at any time, ask questions. So somebody, uh, I think it was Don actually, was talking about, you know, when was the first document period described? It was described in 1575 in a, in a uh, uh, basically a hospital record. Uh, but the first anatomic description was actually in 1749 by uh, a pathologist, uh, and Macaulay, but the, the study of the anatomy didn't happen until 1848 when Walker described all the diaphragmatic hernias. Unfortunately, despite the fact that people have known for a long time, the surgery, the, the repair of diaphragmatic hernias, the very first one was actually by a French surgeon, out, who uh, repaired it in an adult in 1902, and it took 20 years before he actually fixed it in a child. The wide, the, the wider, uh, acceptance of repairing diaphragmatic hernias in kids didn't happen until the 1940s when uh, doctors uh, Ladd and Gross in, in Boston actually started fixing these. And Dr. Gross didn't fix his first infant diaphragmatic hernia for another 10 years and published this in 1946. And, and that's Dr. Gross, and, and that's actually the article uh, that he published. And he called surgical repair of the CDH a surgical attack on the malformation, and certainly when some of you re recount your experience in the ICU with your with your child, you probably thought it was a surgical attack. And you've seen this x-ray probably in your own, for your own child uh, before. This is how they present. And you can see this uh, on the left-hand side is the left. This is a left diaphragmatic hernia. You can see all the gas bubbles that don't belong there. And this is a right-sided hernia, and the, all the gas bubbles don't belong there. And you can see on both of these x-rays, as a result of the hernia going in, everything is pushed to the opposite side. So this is what the anatomy looks like in terms of a diaphragmatic hernia. The uh, hole in the diaphragm is here. And so the stuff that doesn't belong in the chest, like bowel, stomach, spleen, liver, uh, end up in the chest, and then it uh, uh, pushes onto the opposite side, and it gives that typical uh, problem of the, the good lung, the opposite lung being squished. So the principles for surgical repair hasn't changed for 100 years. It's still three simple steps. You uh, open up Traditionally, you open up the tummy and you pull everything back down from the chest inside the abdomen, and then you close that hole. And if the hole is small and you can just stitch it closed, that's a simple repair. If it's a big hole, then you have to patch it. And then if you can, if the tummy's not too tight, once everything's brought back down inside the tummy, then you close the tummy. 
so this is a little cartoon showing the, uh, so this is the, uh, the looking through a tummy incision into the tummy and up towards the chest. So this is the hole in the diaphragm. And uh, you're looking <coughs> into the chest now. Everything is brought back out from the, from the hernia. So if it's a s small hole like that, you can just close that hole with some sutures. But if it's a bigger hole, then uh, we use patches. And we, we'll be talking a little bit more about those patches. And I, I just highlight something here. Here's an old picture, old cartoon depicting repair, where they used to put a chest tube into the chest to, to drain the chest. And, and we don't do that anymore because we know that it's going to take a very long time for that hypoplastic lung, that underdeveloped lung, to actually grow. And so the body just says, I don't like the space. I'm going to fill it with fluid. So if you leave a chest tube uh, there, that fluid doesn't accumulate and, and acts as a, as a pathway for bacteria to track inside. So we've stopped putting chest tubes in. So this is a, this is a picture of a similar uh, depiction of the cartoon. So this is actually a tummy incision. And what you're looking at here is the uh, uh, hole in the, in the diaphragm. So you're looking into the chest from the tummy. This is the liver, this is the stomach, this is the, the colon, the large bowel. And this is the diaphragm. So this is the muscular diaphragm. And so the first step after we open the tummy is we pull everything back down, we look at the size of the hole, try to bring the edges together, see if there's any tension. If there isn't, then we just stitch it close. So what's changed over the last 30 years in terms of diaphragmatic hernia repair? Well. Although the principles are the same, what's changed is when do we do the repair, so the timing of the repair, the tools that we have for uh, fixing diaphragmatic hernias, and also the types of patches I mentioned earlier. So back in the 70s and 80s when um, we were uh, seeing diaphragmatic hernia babies, we were under the impression that the babies were sick because everything was squished into the chest and the good lung was being squished and everything that was being squished was causing the, the problems for the baby. So they weren't breathing well because the good lung was being squished. Their right heart pressures were high because the heart was being squished. So though that belief led to diaphragmatic hernia repairs being done emergently. So as soon as the baby was born, it had to be, the repair had to be done within the first four hours. That type of an emergency operation. So 